I was able to push my way at the very end of the meeting to ask a question that I've been wanting to ask for about the last half hour to 45 minutes. I'd like to know Give why. Wait, wait, the, here I'd like to know why these spent fuel pools are not contained in the same way as the reactors and as the dry cask. That I mean, outside of the reactors, that is the most dangerous state of the fuel, and it has to stay there for up to 15 years. Why are the spent fuel pools not contained in the same way as the reactors and the dry cask when they're going to be exposed to tsunami, earthquake, and any other kind of hazard? The spent fuel pools are not contained in the same manner as the reactor because the, the reactor is is under extremely high temperatures and pressures, um, so that the, the containment is is there to to contain that those high temperatures and pressures. Um, the 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 pool itself is is at ambient temperature and pressure. They're, they're not under those those same high temperatures and pressures, and it's. And as such, the, the, the risk associated with um, a release uh, is, is not the same as, as, as in, a, in a reactor. The pools, the, the whole the primary purpose of the pool is to cool and keep the, the spent fuel cool. Um, it's to, to, to maintain uh, cooling uh, circulating around the, 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 the fuel itself. The fuel is, is, all, is put inside the pool uh, in a manner that, that it will not reach criticality. Hell of a lot of spent fuel, yes. very radioactive fuel, yes. at both those reactors at San Onofre and also at Diablo Canyon. There's more cesium in the cooling pool at Pilgrim Nuclear Power Plant in Massachusetts than there is in all the fallout from all the nuclear tests that have ever occurred in the history of the nuclear age in one cooling pool. Those cooling pools have to be cooled continuously, and if they're not, they too will melt down, like they worried about Unit 4 at Fukushima. So you all have driven, or most of you have driven by uh, San Onofre. You know it's very close to the highway. There are two containment domes for the two reactors that are still operating, another containment structure nearby for a third reactor that was shut down years ago. Um, inside each of those reactors, um, there is about a thousand times the long life radioactivity of the Hiroshima bomb. And in the irradiated nuclear fuel pools that are between those two reactors, there's about 10 times as much as that. So the amount of radioactivity that exists at San Onofre, somewhere between Los Angeles and San Diego, is much more than the amount of radioactivity that was released from Three Mile Island, Chernobyl, and Fukushima. Um, the amount available for release is just astronomical. The pool itself is, is at ambient temperature and pressure. They're, they're not under those, those same high temperatures and pressures. And it's, and as such, the, 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 the risk associated with um, a release uh, is, is not the same as, as, as in, a, in a reactor. Inside each of those reactors, um, there is about a thousand times the long life radioactivity of the Hiroshima bomb. And in the irradiated nuclear fuel pools, that are between those two reactors, there's about 10 times as much as that. The cooling of the, of the, of the, of the pool, or the um, fuel itself, is the, is the specific uh, issue there. Um, as long as that's maintained, um, and it, 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 as long as it's maintained, that's the... How are the pools protected 
just like the dry cask. I mean, there's a whole section in your PowerPoint about how the the ifsies are like impervious to tsunami or environmental hazard. You know, they're totally protected and encased. Or terrorist. Okay. Why aren't there's, the fuel, why aren't there's, the fuel pools? I don't, I don't know the thickness off the top of my head, but there's this thick um, stainless steel lining that goes all the way around the pool. The pools themselves are, are 40 or 50 feet deep, and there's about 20 feet of water between above the um, the actual uh, top of the spent fuel. So there's another 20 feet of water above that. Um, there's about five feet of concrete um, that, that's on the outside of the of the lining itself, and so that's that's what's protecting the pool, the the fuel itself. Um, you know, and, and so from from the from from the sides, and, you know, from, from a from a leaking standpoint, there's no you know, that that's all there to, to prevent it from leaking and making sure that the water stays inside the pool. Okay. But how about the top? The top. If you, I think maybe we can sure. continue this conversation well, can just answer the question offline. About the but thank yeah. you for that question. Yeah. And we're out of time. We're out of time, and so I'm going to ask Larry Camper to close the meeting out for us. So um, I was I was able to push my way at the very end of the meeting to ask a question that I've been wanting to ask for about the last half hour to 45 minutes. And it was because I noticed in all the materials the NRC had reviewed that, you know, there's a very secure containment around the reactors themselves, and there's a very secure containment around the dry cask storage of the spent fuel. But the spent fuel pools in between those, which is next to the reactors, is the most dangerous state of the spent fuel. It doesn't it doesn't have a containment over the top of those spent fuels. It's just like a roof, like any kind of structure. So I finally was able to push my way into getting that question asked at the very end after, you know, they let uh, Pete Dietrich drone on from Edison for a while and other people, you know, talk. But, um, you know, they went on and on about how secure the, the spent fuel pools are on three sides but they didn't say anything about the top so when I questioned that um, when I questioned that um, you know the facilitator chip just cut it off because they don't want to go into that I mean that's like the Achilles heel of the, the power plants that you have the second most dangerous state of spent fuel not protected you know from the top from anything that might be dropped into it or shot into it or you know whatever and so this is the classic NRC you know pattern with the facilitators at these meetings is that they drone on and on and on about regulations and things that are largely irrelevant to the public and if somebody has the temerity to raise something that actually is meaningful and that will, you know, cast a light on a weakness or, you know, a serious concern, they want to shut it down because all they're interested in is happy talk. So that that's what happened that night. It was sort of business as usual for the NRC.